Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John and I have a very special guest about something important to particularly the men in our audience. Yes, yes. Our guest is an old friend. His name is Walter Davis, um, and we met him, I don't know, 15 years ago, something like that, maybe 20 years ago now. Haven't been in touch for five years or so. I uh, just got back in touch with him, and uh, he is a fascinating guy to begin with. But he has a wonderful story of success with uh, prostate cancer, which we want to share with everybody. Mm -hmm. But first, let me just tell you a little bit about Walter, because he is an amazing character. Um, he spent uh, a full career in the Navy. I guess that's 20 years and retired. Could have retired. You get out of the Navy. I think he was a chief or something like that. Pretty, pretty high up enlistment. Could have retired and put his feet up. But he's a very entrepreneurial guy. And he got out and he started businesses left and right, got into uh, filmmaking and video, which is how we met him. And um, he still is busy. But along the way, he got uh, prostate cancer, which is something, of course, they say that if you live long enough and you're a male, you're going to get prostate cancer. I don't know mm -hmm. what the true statistics are, but it's, it's nasty stuff. Art, you may recall that I have a, an in-law who died of mm -hmm. prostate cancer, um, had an operation, wasn't supposed to be, it was, oh, it was one of those things, well, yeah, sure, we do this all the time, but you know what? It didn't work, and uh, very sad. So it's a dangerous, dangerous form of cancer, and uh, the fact that Walter beat it is amazing, I think. So let's let's meet Walter Davis. Let's bring Walter on and Hi, say Walter. hello. Hi, Walter. Hello, hello. Walter, good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Uh, sure. Particularly under such nice circumstances. Um, before we get into your prostate cancer and how you beat it, uh, tell us about what you're doing with yourself. Because all through this, you're a busy guy. You've been running businesses left and right. Well, I my primary business is uh, financial services. And I got into that when my son passed away in, in 1989. And uh, the, the insurance company didn't give me a good outcome. So I began to study insurance and I, I got into financial services before I retired from the US Navy. I was in the Navy for 25 years. Uh, I was a navigator, uh, missile engagement officer and a, and a chemical dependency therapist. Um, and so the, the way I met you guys was I started a media division to advertise my financial services company. And that entailed using cutting edge technology like streaming. I, I was blogging in 1998 and I was streaming in 2004, long before most people were streaming. Uh, so that's how I got into the media aspect. Um, my brother collapsed on the front porch um, and he was paralyzed from the waist down and we found out he had prostate cancer. We didn't have any history in my family of, of cancer, so no one, you know, ever thought about cancer very much. Uh, so my other brother went and got tested, and he had prostate cancer. Uh, so the first one, he got radiation, um, but it didn't work. He ended up dying a year and a half later. Oh. And then my other brother, um, he became impotent and incontinent because he got the surgery. And Jeez. so I got tested, and you know, I didn't have cancer, uh, but Four years later, I did get a positive result. Um, and I started getting tested every six months. And that's when I did get a positive result. And, you know, they're not very nice. They weren't very nice from the VA when they told me this. They just called me about seven o'clock in the morning and say, hey, your results came back and you have cancer. Just like that. Yeah. By, by the way, just for, uh, uh, for everybody uh, out there who may not know, especially some of the younger men who haven't uh, uh, even thought about this yet is that there's a very uh, simple, if you're having a, a, a series of blood tests anyway, they can just take a little extra and it's called what, PSA? And uh, the lower the number, the better. Uh, but there is a sort of like a, a cutoff where they really begin to worry about whether or not uh, you're gonna uh, get a full-blown case of, uh, of uh, prostate cancer. What, what is that number approximately? Right. Well, the measurement is called PSA, is prostate specific antigen. Mm -hmm. And when you're four and above, that's when they have fears that you have prostate cancer. You know, 
Uh, mine is now down to a 2.62. The last time I was tested, that was several months ago, uh, which basically means I'm I'm pretty safe. And I also had something done uh, called a uh, PCMI PET scan, uh, which goes through the whole body and it looks for cancer. They only do it at the at the UC uh, campuses. I had to actually go to San Francisco because they won't take the VA uh, insurance at UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, and they found no trace of cancer in my body. And, and so every six months I'm getting tested. Um, and it, it appears as though, you know, I don't have any active cancer uh, in my that's body great. at this time. Well, that's, that's great. great. So, Walter, can you uh, give us a sense of, because uh, uh, a lot of people go for radiation or, or have the prostate removed and, and things that seem quite draconian. Uh, but you decided because of uh, your studies to try a different method which uh, I had never heard of before. Could you explain to our audience uh, what that was all about? Well, I was giving a presentation in San Diego. I was speaking at the Joyce Beers Community Center. Um, and there was a lady there who said to me, um, <clears throat> if you know anybody that has cancer and you love them, tell them about poly MVA. Well, I never heard of poly MVA and I didn't, there was no history of cancer at that time. So I didn't even really think about it much. So when they called me that morning and said, hey, well, you have prostate cancer, um, I decided to, I, I want to get this out of my body as soon as possible. So I I arranged to get robotic surgery. So I thought that would be, you know, a more accurate way to get rid of, rid of it, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't do it now. Um, and I showed up at the clinic to get my surgery, but my doctor didn't show up. So... <laughs> that wasn't really a good sign for me. I didn't feel very comfortable at that point. Uh, and so the, the lady at the front desk goes, well, we can reschedule you. And I said, you know what? I, I'm not coming back here. I, I'm not going to do this this way. So I, at that point, I decided to study and look at what my alternatives were. And I tried to remember what that lady had told me. And I know she said something about poly. And that's all I could remember. And uh, I started Googling poly and, and looking at cancer. And finally, this this thing came up about poly MVA, which is poly multiple vitamins and antioxidants. Um, poly MVA has a metal in it, which is called palladium. It's, it's very valuable, uh, very expensive. And um, what it does is it, cancer has an enzyme that sheaths it against the body's natural immunity sense systems, like the, the white blood cells. So the white blood cells can't see the cancer cells. But the poly MVA strips away this enzyme in it, and then allows the body to attack the uh, the cancer. And so um, <clears throat> I started, I was diagnosed in 2008. And by 2011, um, they couldn't find any trace of cancer in my body. Uh, and all I did was just the, the poly MVA at that point. Now, you know, my, my, my brother had cancer, my wife had cancer, my, my mother in this time frame was diagnosed with cancer. My mother was in the medical field too. My mother said, you're crazy, you're gonna die. You know, you, you've you got to uh, take this very seriously, honey, you know? And I said, mom, I am taking it seriously, but I, I see the bad side effects. I saw what happened to my brother, Maurice. I saw what happened to other people. I just don't, I just don't wanna do it that way. And 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 what happened was all of my family members died. They, they took chemo, they took radiation. Um, and they died, and, and there's different types of radiation. There's X-ray and neutron radiation, um, and and those just really eat you up. I mean, and and, and the sure. the chemo um, that my wife was taking was four thousand dollars per treatment. Oh boy! A correction, eight thousand dollars per treatment, and she had that four times a month. So you're looking at thirty-two thousand dollars a month, you know, for this chemo treatment, uh, and she still didn't survive. She she lived she lived nine years. But her feet turn black, her, her hands turn black as my shoes here. Um, and she was a fair complected black woman, you know, and, and so she got these big black uh, spots on her face. It, it was it was a horrible death. She drowned in her own body fluid. What a uh, so I just decided I didn't want to go that route. Uh, so I began to look at alternative motive, motives and um, I actually started to film holistic doctors at the Cancer Control Society Convention every year. And I got to meet a whole bunch of naturopath doctors and they kind of set me on the path uh, that I went on. Hmm. So did you find, um, other than let's say, 
family members who who recommended you go with the traditional uh, treatments. Did you find a lot of resistance in the medical community? Was it hard to pick, go this path, or were people constantly putting roadblocks in front of you? It was very difficult. I mean, because that at the VA hospital, I, I just used the VA for testing. I didn't let them do any type of treatment on me. They, they did. Right, because they're, that's the government. They're only going to do what they do. It, exactly. You know, yeah. they, they're not going to give you the bleeding edge type treatments. They've invested a lot of money into these uh, chemo programs and into the x-ray and neutron radiation delivery systems. Yeah. They didn't even tell me about proton radiation, for example, that has much less damage to the body. Uh, in fact, one doctor said to me, why did you come to us? You don't do what we say do, and, and, and you're going to die, is what, what she told me. Uh, of course, I told her, I never want to see you again. I mean, yeah. you, you don't get the same doctor at the VA. You get a different urologist every time. And, and so they just sure. uh, made it to where I only saw the chief urologist at that point. Yeah. Yeah, the only advantage of the VA is that it's, I'll, I'll call it free. It's paid for. Right. You, you, you earned it during your service. So yeah. you, you get that benefit. But so, Walter, going back to... Um, uh, uh, you, you took the bull by the horns, uh, and you chose a, a, a alternative or holistic medicine that most uh, uh, people don't think of and are probably not recommended by their doctors. So uh, you said that you were filming some of these doctors. Uh, do you have any where people can get further information about um, uh, your treatment, of the, the journey that you followed? Right. Well, I mean, they can go to the Cancer Control Society Convention website, but also at my website, which is www.holisticcentral.info. Um, I, I tell people that getting cancer was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Uh, but I have the luxury of saying that. I mean, everybody has different results. I had a very non-aggressive cancer, didn't move very fast. So they put me on something called watch and wait, you know, and, and, and through this process, I was learning more and more and more. I started to figure out, you know, why do people get cancer anyway? Why, why do we get this? What, what happens? Um, and it's kind of like having a cup when you're pouring your coffee in. If you pour in too much coffee, then it's going to run over. It's going gonna, it's gonna to spill over the side. That's kind of what happens with cancer. Uh, you have all this, this big load of toxins in the body and your body just can't keep up with it. And so when that overflows, then you start to get active cancer. Everybody has cancer in their body, whether or not it's active or not. That's that's the issue. And so I began to look at my diet, changing my diet, limiting sugars. Um, I did some things. And I'm from the South. So, you know, you when you cook your bacon, you would pour your bacon grease into this cup or, or a container. Then you would reuse your grease. I mean, and I learned I couldn't do that. I, I was I was cleaning my sinks with comment, uh, yeah. you know, I, I get the sponge and just put the cleanser on the on the sponge and wipe down the sink or the toilet or whatever. Well, those chemicals were going into my fingers and going down into my liver. So I started to put, make sure I had gloves on. I started to make my own cleansers. I learned to do that uh, with Dr. Jessica Heyman from Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. So as I did these interviews, I started learning more and more uh, about holistic methodology. So I, I make my own degreaser now, for example, out of orange peels that I soak in uh, white vinegar for 10 days. Uh, I make my glass cleaner and countertop cleaner out of lemon peels that I soak for 10 days and, and uh, white vinegar. And so I began to disinfect my house and my clothing with hydrogen peroxide. Um, and I stopped using a microwave. So I made real big life changes gradually based upon a lot of the interviews that I did with, with some of these doctors, like Dr. Forsythe that helped Su Suzanne Summers uh, recover from her cancer. So there's a whole list of those interviews uh, on my website at holisticcentral.info. Well, oh, you know, wonderful. Walter, this is really fascinating that um, uh, uh, we're, uh, I think as a society, always wary of uh, people who do something out of the norm. Uh, and uh, sometimes people like yourself do it out of uh, desperation because you've seen loved ones, close loved ones, uh, dying of cancer, and you've figured, well, if that's their result, 
maybe I ought to take a look at something else. And you've always been curious about that kind of stuff all the years that we've known you. And uh, just for our audience sake, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but prostate cancer is the second largest cause of death of males in the US. I think it's in the 30,000 a year. Uh, it's below lung cancer, which is number one. But 30,000 a year is not too many, uh, too much different than traffic deaths, uh, which I think uh, hovers around the 50,000 uh, a year fatalities uh, in the US. So it's a big thing. And we hear more and more people living with it. We hear yeah. older, older fellows like us uh, talking about it. I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've had a PSA that's been close to zero every time they measure it. My doctor doesn't even want to measure it anymore. But as uh, you all know, I have a 25 year rolling plan and have my sister planning my 100th birthday party. So I'll probably have another couple of PSA <laughs> tests uh, uh, before that, that date. So, Walter, we thank you for sharing this amazing journey that you've been on. Uh, We're glad you're still around. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, it, it, it's a, a time when, when people get serious diseases, and many of us, because we're living longer, healthier lives in general, and therefore we've got a better opportunity for some of these things to eventually get us, that maybe there are people should look into things that are above and beyond what your normal uh, physicians will tell you. Not that they're they're wrong or they mean poorly, but there could be other things that could even help a different course of action that they're they're offering you. So, congratulations to you for looking into this for getting a great outcome, and we look forward to uh, hearing about many of your further adventures throughout the years. Thank you, Walter. Yeah, and I just want to make sure people look at things like uh, uh, proton radiation. I did get that. Mm. Uh, that doesn't cause a lot of damage to the body. And also hyperbaric oxygen therapy was very important in terms of me recovering. Uh, so th those are things that they never brought up to me at the VA. I actually found out by accident when I went on to advertise one of my shows. I was doing a show to help uh, people learn how to manage their money. I have a series called Millionaire Mentors. And as I was advertising that on Facebook, this ad came up for proton radiation. And it was amazing. I saw all these people with, with, that didn't have that many um, side effects. And um, I thought, well, wow, this, this, this is a great way for me to, to go with it. And I also started using cannabis oil. Uh, the cannabis oil really depleted uh, my PSA. I, I went up to a 32. Um, and the cannabis oil dropped me down to an 11.7 wow. um, in, in just six months. And wow. so it was really amazing. And, and so when I, when I use the cannabis oil, uh, CBD oil, uh, you have to have some small amount of THC. I, and I didn't want to have that psychoactive effect, but you have to have a small amount of THC for it to be effective. I learned that from Dr. Forsythe. So um, I, I did cross into areas that most people do not pursue and a lot of doctors aren't going to tell you about it. Right. Right. Oh, I think yours is a story of um, two things. One, courage, because you were willing to try these things. And two, an intelligent uh, research taking taking matters into your own hands. In other words, you were you weren't going to just sit back and let other people tell you what to do. You researched, you met people, you figured out what's out there, and then you made the decisions uh, what you wanted to do, most of which sounds pretty holistic, quite frankly, pretty natural, naturopathic, I think it's the right word. Um, but the idea of the proton therapy uh, and the hyper, is it hyperbaric? Uh, hyperbolic, yes. yeah. Uh, hyperbaric. I think. Yeah. But anyway, th those are two unusual therapies that I don't think I've heard about before. So um, you really did a great job. And, and the fact that you're willing to share it uh, with your website, I think, is important for people. Well, I mean, the reason that uh, Magic Johnson is surviving his HIV is because he has his own hyperbaric oxygen therapy tank in his house. Oh. Uh, so it, it cures a, a number of different diseases and ailments. Uh, what they primarily use it for is repairing wounds. So 
um, I had a cut on my finger cooking one night and I went into the hyperbaric oxygen therapy the following day and the cut was healed. Wow. You know, just after two hours in, in the tank. They, they take you down below the surface of the water. It, they put you at a pressure level that's, that's 40 feet below the surface and they hold you there for two hours. And yeah. That's, that's done for 40 days. And, and so um, it healed my body inside. I mean, because wow. there was no trace of cancer, but then all of a sudden, uh, after making a filming trip to New Orleans, um, they said, well, it looks like your tumor is, is pressing against your, uh, your prostate capsule and you need more aggressive action. So they wanted to do hormone therapy and surgery, which would have meant I would have grown breast and become incontinent and impudent yeah. for at least six months and possibly permanent, permanently. Yeah. So that wasn't acceptable to me. So I was actually making arrangements to go to Oregon to, to do assisted suicide, you know, because I just wasn't going to live like that. Yeah. That's when I found the article about proton radiation. Um, and in Southern California, we're lucky that we have two centers here, one in Loma Linda and one in San Diego and Mira Mesa. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad I, I chose the one in San Diego because they have the robotic arm that picks you up. It's like being in the future, you know, and it, and it puts you inside of this three story tall machine. Oh, boy. And the radiation comes in, you know, to your body. You don't, you don't feel anything. Um, I, and, and I didn't have any symptoms that really prompted me that I had prostate cancer either. I mean, you know, later on, as it got more advanced, of course, then I, you know, I had frequent urination and things like that. Yeah. But there was really no screaming, you know, alert that, okay, you have cancer. Yeah. Uh, there were no symptoms of that. Uh, but. Once I got the proton radiation and then I went into the hyperbaric oxygen therapy uh, and I implemented the cannabis, I, I knew I was onto something when the VA doctors were all gathering and taking notes. That they were <laughs> asking me, what are you doing? How, how are you bringing down your PSA like this with no chemotherapy <laughs> and no x-ray and neutron radiation? Yeah. I knew I was on the right path at that point and that, and that was in like 2012 when yeah. you know that was happening. Well, it sounds like the proton uh, radiation and the hyperbaric are not uncommon. I mean, they're available. People just don't know about them. It, exactly. The, the, the uh, proton radiation has been around you know, more than 30 years. Um, it's very expensive. It costs more than a million dollars. I mean, oh, so boy. you've got to have great yeah. insurance. And, and great planning. And that's what I do, you know, in, in my uh, financial services company, I make sure that people are you know, properly covered to cover things like that. Um, but yes, it, it's, it's, you have people coming to Southern California to get this procedure done from the East Coast. There's a lot of celebrities, uh, radio personalities from the East that come out here, you know, to get the proton radiation. Uh, and it's pretty amazing, you know, because of the, the energy in that system does not get released until it actually strikes the tumor itself. Mm. Uh, they shape the beam the same shape as the tumor. So the tumor is star-shaped, then the beam is also star-shaped. Uh, wow. So they, they hit you with it for one minute, and then they take a lot of pictures. They, they, they take pictures for 14 minutes. Wow. And, and then, so when you come back in the next day, and you have to come in every day, by the way, for these treatments. Typically, every uh, they, they last 28 days. I went 40 days. I had to go 40 days with mine. Yeah. Um, and when you come in the next day, you know they 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 shoot this beam into you. You're, you're laying on this robotic arm table, and and this machine is huge. I mean, it's 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 three stories high and it's rotating around. And the first time it was terrifying because it makes a lot of noise when it's turning. Yeah. You know, it's like clank 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 clank. You know, and it goes around and um. But I'm so glad that I did that, as opposed to getting the uh, the X-ray uh, radiation, which would have just it, it, it damages your body when it enters your body. Every organ between the entry point and the tumor is damaged, and then it comes out the other side of your body, and then everything after wow. the tumor is yeah. damaged as well. And so, some of these treatments that they kill you. I mean, oh, so you sure. can kill the cancer quickly, but you kill yourself quickly yeah. as well. I mean, I think for all cancers, not just uh, prostate cancer, everybody 
who has a relative who's been treated for cancer with chemo or radiation knows that. They know that, you know, if there you are survive, side effects, sure. It can it can cure you. But, well, I'll tell uh, you what, Walter. Walter, we're going to uh, make sure that uh, all of these links that you uh, uh, d d discussed uh, with us today are in the description below. Uh, there'll be okay. the opportunity for people to uh, uh, contact you uh, directly if they want and see some of the other things that you're doing. Uh, but we do appreciate you bringing something that most of us have not heard of yet. With something which is a very uh, uh, important uh, consideration for particularly men in their uh, later second half of their life. And we thank you for sharing your story with us. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.